I'm the luckiest guy on this earth. And the reason for that is because I have friends who are the best people on this planet. And one of them joins me today in the bunkhouse, a very special friend of mine, a great, great actor, and a wonderful writer. His name is Alex Cord. Alex? Hi, Ray. I'm so proud you're here. <laughs> I'm proud to be here. This is the realization of a dream for me. Well, I'm, I'm glad you took the time to come and see us. We're, we're proud of our bunkhouse, and we're proud of the folks who come and visit with us. And tell us a little bit about where you came from. Well, it's funny. I said this is a, a dream for me. I'm a great believer in the power of dreams. Most people get locked into, uh, I guess that's where the phrase uh, think outside the box came from. People get locked into a way of thinking, living, uh, dictated by their parents, peers, and stuff. Ever since I was a little kid, I was in love with horses. I was born with that love for horses. And when I was two years old, I wanted to be a cowboy. And I was born on Long Island in New York. Nobody in my family knew which end of a horse eats. But my parents put me on a pony when I was two years old, and I never got off. And I dreamed about being a cowboy. And to me, a cowboy was a Texan. <laughs> so I always wanted to be a Texan. So now I am a Texan. And when people ask me where I'm from, I usually lie. I don't tell them I'm from New York. <laughs> I tell them I'm from somewhere in Texas. Well, that's a, it's a feeling of belonging. It's a feeling that we can't express to other people, but there's something special about being a Texan. It sure is. But on Long Island, uh, when you were growing up, there was a lot of agriculture, wasn't there? Oh, you? yeah, lots of horses, yeah. I mean, I rode all the time as a youth while other kids were uh, playing football and baseball. I was down at the stable shoveling manure, so they'd let me ride after I got my work done. Yeah. Well, how'd you get into acting? Why, why was that a, something that really attracted you? Again, dreams. I always had dreams that most people wouldn't ever even entertain a thought. It was so far from their reality. And that was the same uh, for me. But I wanted, I went to college and I majored in English literature. I was always fascinated by the written word. And uh, all the pretty girls were in the dramatic arts department. And I started to take some of those courses, uh, voice and diction, oral reading, history of the th theater, and stuff like that. And uh, that's how it started. I got into a play in college, and uh, I never looked back. I, I've been acting ever since. One thing led to another, and then before I knew it, I was at the American Shakespeare Festival at Stratford, Connecticut, and doing a play with Bert Lahr, Midsummer Night's goodness. Dream, and uh, Catherine Hepburn, Robert Ryan, who I later got to do a Western movie with. Yeah. What Just, are some of the great memories of, of doing movies? Gosh, there are so many. Well, playing the Ringo Kid in stage, uh, the re remake of uh, Stagecoach, I got to play the John Wayne part. I mean, you talk about fantasies <laughs> coming true for a kid from Long Island in New York. And uh, got to work with Bing Crosby, and Margaret, Slim Pickens, Van Heflin. I mean, my mother, uh, her biggest uh, idol in life was uh, Bing Crosby. She was about Bing Crosby the way the young girls were about the Beatles in the, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. And here I am doing a movie with Bing Crosby. So I flew my mother and father out to uh, Boulder, Colorado, and my mother got to have dinner with Bing Crosby. I mean, you know, what? how does it get any better than that, you know? I mean, that's a dream and they can come true. And I would encourage everybody in the world to unlock their brain, think outside the box, really think outside the box, and don't ever listen to anybody who has anything negative to say about your dreams, your desires, and your fantasies. That is such wonderful advice. I believe and it. And you know, somebody told me not long ago that if somebody says you can't do that, that just means he can't. 
That's right. That doesn't mean you can't. That's right, yeah. And so often we're swept. I mean, you can have the entire course of your life change by a negative word from one single insignificant person. Did anybody ever tell you you couldn't write a book? There you go. <laughs> Nobody ever told me I could. <laughs> and I've written four but, now. But you thought you could. I sure did. Well, well, yeah. tell, us, tell us about A Feather in the Rain. We'll get up there so folks can well, see Well, that. that one, there's a little sadness to it, but again, it's a realization of something. I lost a young son. He was 26 years old. And it was the most devastating thing that you can ever imagine certainly that ever happened to me. And uh, for a while there, I thought my life was over. I mean, I literally kind of hid under the covers. I felt, and I was doing good, but uh, I just was paralyzed by it. And finally I got tired of that and I kicked myself in the butt and I got up and said, uh, I've got to do something. So I sat down and I started to write about him. I had already written a couple of books and uh, uh, I had no idea what I was going to write. I had a stack of uh, yellow legal tablets. I since learned how to use a word processor. And uh, I started to write about him and I wrote about 10 pages that day. I had no idea what I was writing. But I felt good. I had done something and I had no thought in my mind. Got up the next day, I did the same thing again. And anyway, before I knew it, I had 625 pages. I had to edit it down to 325. <laughs> that was the hard part. But there it is. It just shaped itself, and I felt like my son was on my shoulder the whole time while I was writing it. What a wonderful thing. And you can pick this up at any bookstore, can't you? Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and uh, alexcord.net will take you right to the publisher, yeah. And it's gonna be a movie. That's Harrison Ford on the cover there. Uh, Sly Stallone, Ernie Borgnine, all people saying good things about it. All right. It's a good story. Alex, I'm so proud you came by to visit with us. And I'm so sorry that time is short because we have a thousand things to visit about. Yeah, we and sure maybe do. at another time we can do that. We'll do it again. You betcha. Thank you, pal. Thank you, my friend.